What's up guys, it's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com and I've got another awesome recipe for you. Today we are making picanha. That's right, Brazilian steakhouse favorite. I'm gonna teach you how to do it at home. Really simple tools, it's all about the technique. Let's do it. First up, we need to talk about the cut of meat. Now, picanha is pretty common in Brazil, and you see it a lot in Brazilian steakhouses, but it's becoming more and more popular for the home backyard enthusiasts. But where do you find it? <laughs> and that's a problem that we've run into, is I've wanted to make it at home, and in Utah, it's not necessarily a cut that is super easy to find. The first time I actually got my hands on some, I had to order it online and have it shipped to my house. But it is becoming more and more common and I actually found this at a local meat shop here in Southern Utah just today. So, I think you can do it. Here's what you need to look for. It is typically labeled a top sirloin. And here in the United States, that's what your meat counter, your meat cutter, your butcher will likely know the cut or recognize the cut is as a top sirloin. They're also called culotte steaks in the United States. Um, if you have a really savvy butcher, you might be able to tell in picanha and he'll know what you're talking about. But here is what the whole piece of meat looks like. If you're getting the whole roast, it typically comes with the fat cap on. The back side being cut away from the sirloin will often have a little bit of silver skin. If you have any left from having it trimmed from the butcher, you can just take that off. If you get the whole roast, this is what you need to do. But if you get it cut into steaks, then you don't need to worry about this part because it's already gonna be done for you. This looks like, like this roast almost looks like a tri-tip in the three points that you have on this particular roast. And we're gonna cut it into individual steaks that are about, I don't know, inch and a half to two inches thick. And we're just gonna start on the thickest, widest part of that triangle and then work our way down to the narrow end. Picanha is traditionally cooked on a flat skewer over a rotisserie that's rotated over charcoal consistently. Like I said, we're not doing any fancy setups today, so we're simply using the skewers that I had in my kitchen drawer, and we're cooking them over a Weber kettle. But we're gonna still get that beautiful, traditional, amazing flavor that you can get in the Brazilian steakhouses. It's just a couple little simple ticks, tips, tri trips and trips. Tur -tur 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 -tur. Just with a couple simple tips and tricks. All right, grab your skewers. Like I said, I'm just using normal skewers. These are the ones that I had in my uh, kitchen drawer. But they do make these cool double skewers and that allows you to flip it easily. The way that we're gonna mimic that is by using two skewers so that the meat doesn't flip while we're trying to flip it over on the grill. That's especially important because you're gonna have you know some decent weight on the grill itself. So start, sorry weight of meat on the skewers. So you have heavy meat, you want two skewers. That's ours. you know, you know, right? <laughs> All right, grab your picanha steak, fold it into a C shape, and then start your skewer just on one side of that C. I'm just gonna skewer all of them on one side first, and then I'm gonna get the second skewer. Please don't skewer your fingers. And once we've got one side, we start with skewer number two on the other side. Beautiful. And then we'll take these two little cuties. And get them on our two point skewer. The only seasoning I'm using on this picanha is salt. But I want to use a really good quality salt, so I'm using a coarse ground kosher salt. This is more of a flake salt than a diamond salt. I like to be able to see the bigger, coarser granules because I know exactly how much I'm putting on there. So we're just gonna season that on all sides. All right, meat is seasoned. My coals are hot. We're gonna dump out the coals only on half of the grill. We need a hot zone and we need a cool zone to mimic that rotisserie experience that we traditionally get with picanha. 
My lump charcoal is nice and ashed over and white hot. And I'm just gonna bank all of those coals on one half of my grill. Meat is seasoned, grill is hot. It's time for a picanha to get onto these warmed up grill grates. Now I'm gonna be placing these steaks right on that line between the heat and the no heat. And then I'm just gonna be flipping these really regularly. Because we're not on a rotisserie that's automatically spinning them for us, that means I get to stand by and babysit a little bit. But that regular flipping is gonna give us the basting of the juices. It's gonna give us that even color and cook throughout the picanha. And it's gonna have really delicious flavor. Just be prepared to hang out, grab a drink, and we're gonna be flipping these every two to three minutes. So I'm actually gonna cover the grill in between flipping because that convection heat that you get when the lid is closed is gonna help cook the picanhas all the way through more evenly instead of having them all the way charred on the outside and rare on the inside. This is where you really start to love those two skewers. Look how easy those flip. None of them are sliding around. Beautiful. We're just starting to pick up some color and some crust on the outside. It's awesome. These are gonna take about 20 to 25 minutes, I estimate, so like 10 flips if you're flipping every two minutes, which means I have a quick minute to talk to you guys about the heat source you're using. I really, 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 really recommend using charcoal for picanha because it is so simple, literally meat and salt. The type of fuel you use will add a ton of distinct flavor to the meat that you're cooking with. For this particular application, I like to use lump charcoal. It cooks really hot, it gives you a beautiful flavor profile, but if you've got briquettes, they work wonderfully also. If you do have a gas grill, this recipe will work. Just keep flipping to get that nice caramelized char on the outside, and you should be good to go. Just keep flipping, just keep flipping. It's like that song from, um, that one movie that, that one movie mention. that one lady we're gonna start checking temps we're about i don't know 15 minutes in see these guys this fat one right here on the end is pretty low so i just flipped it so it's more over the direct heat these ones back here a little bit higher and these tiny little guys we're all about 100 degrees so what i'm looking for here it's about 125 to 130. That puts me in the rare zone in the middle. But because these are cooking over high heat on the outside, that means they're gonna be more done towards the outside and more rare towards the middle. So if they're at 125 rare right in the middle, that means as they get towards the outside, they're gonna move more towards medium. And so everybody can have a little bit of what they like. In between another flipping session, I just wanna talk about instant read thermometers really fast. This is gonna be your best friend if you do a lot of outdoor hot and fast cooking. Obviously the thermopens are my favorite. You probably see them in every video that I use because if you're cooking meat, I think this is one of the most valuable tools you can have in your barbecue arsenal. Um, you'll never have to worry about overcooking meat. You'll never have to worry about undercooking meat. It gives you an instant, like within three seconds read and it's incredibly accurate. And I love that they're here in Utah. It's a local company to me and I love to support these guys. So I don't know, check out the thermopen. This is the MK4. This is actually a unique coral color and I love them so much they even put my name on the back of it. <laughs> I've recruited help for the taste test of this particular dish because my daughter is a steak aficionado and she loves those Brazilian steak houses where you get to just like turn on the green thing and then have a meat parade come to your table. So I'm gonna start with a little slice across the top. Okay, you can grab that one. Put that on your plate. No. 
That's really good. Seeing that as we get more to the middle, they get more and more red and rare. But if you're a rare lover, those middle pieces are for you. For me? For Todd. And for me, maybe. Autumn, would you believe if I told you that was just salt on there? That's the only seasoning. It's just salt and meat and charcoal. It's so good. Mmm. Hmm. I think if I could use one word to describe this meat, I would call it buttery. Doesn't it kind of give you like a buttery melt in your mouth? Nice. Look at You have these perfect crispy edges contrasted with that beautiful juicy pink inside. Ah, it's so good. Hmm. You can definitely taste that this was cooked over that charcoal. It gives you that really rich, outdoorsy, campfirey, smoky deliciousness. Mmm. We should make these again soon. Like, as soon as we're done eating this batch, we should make another one. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I hope you guys give this recipe a try at home. You know, hey, grill, hey, you know, our whole goal is to help you make better barbecues. So you can feed the people you love and become a backyard barbecue hero. I don't think anything says, anything says like backyard barbecue hero, like Brazilian steakhouse at your own family table. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. If you do, take a picture, use the hashtag hey girl hey, that way I can see it and cheer you on on your journey to becoming a backyard barbecue hero. See you next time. We gotta get charcoal ready to light and Todd asked me to come dump the charcoal, but that's only cause he can't figure out this. You guys figured out the one string bag of charcoal technique? Look at this. Oh. I didn't even do it one-handed while very terribly filming. Look at it. Woohoo! Show off. Comes right open.